reasoning. It occurs when an argument's form is flawed. Aristotle was the first to systematize these errors in his sophistical refutations, identifying 13 fallacies. He categorized them into two types. Those depending on language, arguments failing at the level of grammar, and those not depending on language, arguments failing at the level of logic. If an argument is fallacious, it is wrong, illogical, and invalid. Sophistry is the art of using flawed arguments to deceive. Whether intentional or not, people often resort to fallacious reasoning when defending various propositions. Without a firm grasp of formal logic and an awareness of common logical fallacies, as taught in the trivium, it's easy to be misled. This deception is especially evident in discussions about the empirically proven geocentric level Earth versus the falsified heliocentric globe model. Globe proponents frequently employ a mix of fallacies and sophistry to support their views. Therefore, recognizing these logical pitfalls is essential for discerning the truth. Let's break down some of the most common logical fallacies employed by globe believers. Number one, the appeal to ridicule fallacy. This fallacy occurs when an argument is dismissed through mockery or ridicule rather than by addressing its merits or providing a reasoned rebuttal. During discussions on Earth's shape, a globe earther might say, Earth cannot be level because if it was, cats would have pushed everything off the edge by now. This appeal to ridicule makes the argument for the level Earth seem absurd without engaging with the actual evidence or reasoning behind it. By turning the argument into a joke, the globe earther avoids addressing the scientific data and logical points presented as proof for the level Earth. Number two, the straw man fallacy. This fallacy occurs when one distorts or oversimplifies another person's argument, making it easier to attack. Instead of engaging with the actual position, they attack a weaker version of it, known as a straw man. For example, in discussions about Earth's shape, globe earthers often create a straw man by claiming, if the Earth were level, the sun would light up the entire surface and there would be no night. This misrepresents the reality that the sun is proven to be local and acts like a spotlight, illuminating only part of the Earth at a time. By attacking this misrepresented argument, globe earthers avoid addressing the actual evidence for the level plane. Number three. The burden of proof fallacy. This fallacy, also known as shifting the burden of proof, occurs when someone demands that the opponent prove their position while failing to provide evidence for their own claims. For example, globe defenders often insist that objective realists must prove the earth is level rather than providing evidence for the claim of curvature or addressing the falsification of the globe via the scientific method. Since the level Earth is empirically demonstrable, this tactic shifts the responsibility away from proving their own position and avoids engaging with the actual evidence presented for level Earth. Number four, the appeal to authority fallacy. This fallacy occurs when an argument is accepted as true based solely on the authority or reputation of the person making the claim rather than on the strength of the evidence presented. For example, a globe earther might claim that the Earth is a sphere simply because renowned scientists like Einstein or Newton have supported similar concepts. This appeal to authority assumes the claim is true based on the reputation of these figures without providing additional evidence or addressing the empirical data supporting the level Earth. While expert opinions can be valuable, they should not replace direct evidence and logical reasoning. Valid arguments must be supported by independent verification rather than relying solely on the authority of those endorsing them. Number five, the false equivalency fallacy. This fallacy occurs when comparisons are made between situations that are not sufficiently alike, leading to misleading conclusions. For example, globe earthers claim that the world's vast oceans curve around a sphere displaying and holding thousands of miles of surface convexity without any containment. However, there is no measurable curvature anywhere on Earth and no evidence that water behaves in this way. 
Globe proponents might argue that water bending can be evidenced in small scale phenomena like water droplets or the meniscus effect. However, this comparison is fallacious because the behavior of small scale water phenomena cannot be directly equated with the behavior of vast oceans. The scientific principles governing small droplets do not apply to large scale water bodies, making this comparison misleading and illogical. Number six, the red herring fallacy. This fallacy occurs when someone diverts attention from the relevant issue being discussed by introducing an irrelevant topic. When presented with empirical and measurable evidence for the Earth's level surface and observations that falsify the globe's curvature rate, the globe proponent might shift the focus by asking about the movement of celestial bodies. This red herring distracts from the core discussion about the Earth's shape by introducing an unrelated topic. While celestial bodies are interesting, they do not address the specific measurable evidence about the Earth's level surface, which is crucial for evaluating the shape of the ground beneath our feet. Number seven, the black and white fallacy. This fallacy, also known as the false dilemma, occurs when two options are presented as the only possible outcomes, ignoring other viable alternatives. For example, it might be argued that the Earth must either be a sphere or a level plane with an edge. This black and white thinking disregards other possibilities, such as an infinite plane or an enclosed dome. By framing the argument as a simple either or scenario, the globe earther avoids addressing the full range of evidence and theories about Earth's shape, thus limiting the scope of the discussion and preventing a thorough examination of all potential realities. Number eight, the ad hominem fallacy. This fallacy occurs when someone undermines an argument by attacking the character or personal traits of the opponent, rather than addressing the argument itself. For example, in discussions about Earth's shape, a globe defender might dismiss an objective realist's evidence for the level plane by attacking the person's credibility or character, such as saying, you only talk about a level Earth because you're uneducated or stubborn. This ad hominem attack avoids engaging with the actual evidence and arguments presented. Instead of addressing the scientific data or logical reasoning, it focuses on disparaging the individual making the claim. Effective discussions should concentrate on evaluating the arguments based on evidence and reason, rather than on personal attacks. Number nine, the fallacy of incomplete evidence. This fallacy, also known as cherry picking, occurs when only select pieces of evidence that support a particular conclusion are highlighted while ignoring other evidence that contradicts it. For example, globe defenders might present high altitude videos showing a curving horizon as undeniable proof of a globular Earth. However, these videos are often filmed using fisheye lenses or are complete CGI fabrications. When using standard lenses without manipulation, high altitude footage consistently shows a perfectly flat horizon, 360 degrees around without any curvature. By cherry-picking specific examples that appear to support their position and ignoring the contradictory evidence, globe earthers commit the fallacy of incomplete evidence, misleading the discussion away from the comprehensive reality. Number 10, the reification fallacy. This fallacy occurs when an abstract concept is treated as if it were a tangible, concrete reality without sufficient evidence to support it. For example, Globe Earthers often refer to the globe model, an abstract concept and CGI representation, as a real tangible object. They treat the globe as if it were physically proven, despite the fact that there is no empirical evidence to substantiate its existence. In contrast, level Earth reality is supported by hundreds of empirical proofs and observations that adhere to the scientific method. By reifying the globe concept, Globe Earthers ignore the lack of concrete evidence and avoid engaging with substantial empirical proof for the demonstrable level plane.